got. South Carolina's really heated up since y'all played them the last time. What are they doing? Well, one, uh, they, they're playing fast, which I think there's there's a misconception about South Carolina. They like to play slow and grind it, which they can do that. But they're playing much faster. Their guards are playing really well. Uh, and they just, I think they've uh, run a little spread game where they're doing a great job of working the, you know, the elbow areas, the nail area, and just cutting, and playing right there. But uh, getting good guard play, getting getting good play from everyone. But uh, they they are really a team that you have to you have to defend in the transition. How much of a difference is Quiznard making for them lately? It seems like he's really stepped up. Well, I think they have. I, I think I think this time of year. I think they're coming in to be the kind of the team that, uh, that Frank felt they would be, you know, when the season started and he's playing well. I mean, they're, they're getting some really good play from a lot of different players. You've been in this league ever since Coach R was a freshman. Just what, what have you seen with his, his development and how impressive? Again, I, I, I've, I've talked to you guys all the time. I have great admiration for guys that get better. And uh, I would tell you the best compliment I could give him is I would love to coach him. I really would because I, again, I think Frank's done a terrific job with him, and uh, and he's playing a little bit more. He's you know he's doing a little bit more away from basketball, a lot like what Folky's doing. He's, they're giving him some space to work in and letting him go to work that way. He's shooting the ball, and uh, but he's improved a lot and has put himself in position that he's going to have a, have a nice career when he gets done there. Is everybody healthy? Aside from Trezo? Yeah, well, I, I haven't heard anything about him, but yeah, everybody. You know, there's still a couple guys that are dealing with that little whatever it is. You know. Uh, Chad told me today, the only thing he told me today was that Jalen wasn't feeling great today, but uh, Folky was feeling better. And, and Josiah had done some things on the treadmill, so we'll just see what, uh, I think he'll do a little bit in practice today, but again, it's still day to day. When, when you flip on the Arkansas film, just what, what, what jumped out at you? I mean, that looked like a pretty complete effort. Well, a after we got started, you know, we, we turned the ball over to the start of the game, you know, from an out of bounds situation. Uh, and and I, I thought our, we were fluid on offense. I, I do think that happened, and obviously, you know, Santi's getting more settled in, more so. But uh, honestly, with knowing how Folky felt, that's what jumped out because he was able to do some things that uh, we weren't sure that he would be able to do. And but overall, I thought everyone, for the most part, that went in the game really did some really, really good things. And once we settled in and start taking care of the ball, we, we were able to get some separation. Just Devontae and Olivier, how, how valuable can, you know, seeing what they did on the field be for them? It, it's important. I mean, Devontae's energy, I mean, you go back, I mean, he's had, what, four games now where he's really brought some energy and has gone out and played with uh, with an attitude in terms of, you know, I'm going I'm to do my job, I'm going to be aggressive, I'm going to try to make some things happen on the defensive end and, and uh, get lost on the offensive end. And, and Olivier came in and I thought from a, a standpoint of where he just looked more comfortable in that game. You know, there's been games where he just didn't look comfortable. I thought I thought the other night, for the most part, he, he looked like he knew exactly what he wanted to do when he got the ball. And he was trying to do all the little detailed things that we've asked him to do. But uh, again, we just got to see if we can get consistency now. When we talked about <coughs> those guys on Tuesday, Ticket and, and Olivier, they both mentioned being desperate right now for wins and success. Have you emphasized that, uh, you know, during Well, I don't think – I mean, they know what this time of year is about. I think probably what they're more desperate for is minutes to play because we've told them that we're going we're gonna to play based on production. And, and you might have one chance to go in that game and you better show us that you're locked in mentally and, and that you're doing the things that we see you doing practice. But, I don't think, I mean, desperate. I think everybody's desperate this time of year if you want to talk about wins because we know how hard they are to get, whether you're home or on the road. And, and uh, so, uh, yeah, they, they, I'd like to think they know what, what's at stake this time of year. The attitude that you talk about with Devontae, is that contagious when he can come in and contribute that in short bursts? I, I do. I, I think that what he does, and, and, and I don't think there's any question it gives you a lift. And what, it, what you hope is that it does lift other guys. And, uh, but the other night he was flying around doing some things and trying to get his hands on, you know, deflections and those type things. And so when Jalen got in a little foul trouble, but uh, yeah, I, it's got to help. If not, you've got to, you know, you've got to be looking somewhere else because you, you see one of your teammates out there 
playing with that kind of grit and not wanting to follow suit, it tells you that you're really not ready to play. The way Devontae plays, is there a possibility he could start Saturday if his eyes aren't able to go, or you like the? I, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. You know, one, I like I like what he's doing coming off the bench because I remember we went back and forth with, with Jordan Bowden and Lamonte because you got to have a punch coming off the bench, and, and he's he's doing that right now. So, and I've told you guys in the past, it, I don't really care who starts. It's uh, but uh, we'll wait and see. How, how it goes the next two days. How'd you like to step, start with that line? I, I'm sure part of this because of Arkansas size, but how'd you like to start that lineup? Yeah, it, it was good. I mean, you know, we, we feel like getting Eve back inside to start helps him settle in a little bit quicker, and that's why we did that. And, and uh, you know, he, he can swing out and play on the perimeter, but uh, that was really the reason we did it, was to get, hopefully, to get him off to a good start. Are Roche's minutes at this point tied more to things he has to do better or match up the way to? what he's going to have to do. He's going to have to be productive. I mean, you know, uh, you think about it, when he was playing, Olivier wasn't playing what he was capable of, and Olivier went a game or, or so where he didn't play very much and came to practice and did something about it. And uh, so I, I said after the game the other night, those guys will, will play based on production and them doing what they have to do to help us win. Are you surprised after the way he played at Mississippi State that he's kind of, in, you know, tailed off since then? I mean, did you think he would build on that? Am I surprised? No, because he's a freshman. I think that freshmen have a tendency to think when they have a good game, it's going to be easy. It's going to be there, not realizing that the next game's going to be different. It's not going to be like, you know, a replay, exact replay. And, and uh, so, and, and do I think he, uh, was it physical? No, I think it's mental. I think, I think the, the whole mindset this time of year is your mental approach to what you're doing. And, and I think that he, I don't, I don't want to say complacent or any of that, but uh, the fact is he didn't go at it uh, the way he needed to, to in his preparation because he wasn't as good in practice. And that's where Olivier showed us that he was he was bouncing back. He, Olivier even told me one day, he said, you know, I, I took minutes for granted, but he said, I won't do it anymore. And so he did what he had to do, and we'll see now who Roche does what he needs to do. Take on the degree of difficulty that Santi adds to some of his passes and some of the plays he tries to make. Be around the back stuff. And yeah, well, again, he, that's you know that you, you you've got to have some playmakers. I mean, uh, you you got you got to have some guys, and he's got a good feel for it. And he, you know, there's a risk reward, obviously. But you know, you go back early in the year, some of those weren't getting through there. I just got through watching some our game with South Carolina, and he had some of those same plays that didn't work. But I think he's getting more comfortable. I think he's starting to understand uh, situations. And I can tell you that guys like to play with guys that can get them those type of, I think what Eve had a dunk, maybe two, I mean, where he can get them those, those looks. And, but, uh, you know, Santi's a good player. He's got, he's got a good feel. And as the game goes on, you know, he seems to settle in and starts to figure out where he can operate. And, and, uh, but, uh, I expect him to continue to get better. When you went, when you went back and watched the film, what did you see from Devonte when he was guarding Mason Jones to kind of slow him down? Well, we were trying to make it very difficult for him to catch the ball. You know, we wanted to uh, make him work to really any touch that he got. But uh, but he also, when he wasn't on Mason Jones, he did a really nice job. He picked up a big charge, you know, where he was being active away from the ball, doing some things in the gaps that we want to see him do. But uh, he was just, I just thought he was locked into the scout report uh, from the time he went out there. When you look at Ponds, especially on defense, is shot blocking ability. What goes into that? Is that just natural ability or are y'all working with him in practice on that a lot? Well, you know, when he got here, he wasn't known as a shot blocker and I decided I was going to make him one. I spent, a lot of time <laughs> I spent about, you know, 15 minutes a day talking to him about how to get himself in position and how to, he's starting to hit it out of bounds. I didn't teach him that. I, I tried to teach him the Bill Russell way, you know, you know, block it, catch it, and go the other way. but. No, seriously, he 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 he's got a knack for it. You know, he's got terrific timing. He's he can, what he does well too. He does it. He can kind of keep his body away from his man. man. I mean, he obviously comes over and from the backside and can do it. But uh, he's gotten to where he does a pretty good job, even guarding his own man when he gets by him and, and timing it. But uh, it's you know, it's just he he works at everything and he takes it personal. He wants to try to be a defensive guy, and he's again he he enjoys doing that. He's shown up on some mock drafts. What, what do you think in the NBA franchise will see when they watch him on tape? Well, they knew what we knew, a guy that, that's going to give it to him every day. You know, he's going to work hard. He's going to continue to work hard every day to get better. He uh, He's going to 
And he, I mean, I still think he's just scratching the surface to what he can be. I, I think there's so much more he can add to his game. And he's come such a long way in terms of his feel and those type things. But uh, again, I, I just think he's, I don't even think he's close to starting to be how good he can be. Thank you. Thank you.